Hey comic book hunters, this is Dante D bringing you all another video and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. If you're new to the channel today, welcome. Please consider subscribing, hit that like button and check out the channel for other videos on topics related to geek culture. Today we're going to be talking about how I care for my comics and comic book storage. As you can probably tell by the uh, filing cabinets in the background. I kind of wanted to do something a little lighter hearted today because I haven't done a video on comic book collecting topics really in a while and last week a YouTube user by the name of Vincent McLean reached out to me and he requested that I do a video on how I store my comic books. So Vincent, if you're watching, this video is for you. So let's get right into this video. What I'm going to do is turn the camera around and I'll kind of give you a little tour of the comic book vault. It's not much right now, it's still kind of in the works, but it gets the job done and keeps my comic books safe and it's very convenient and accessible to me. So let's get into it. So when it comes to the comic book vault, there are actually uh, two main sections. This is the first section. Um, I keep most of my comic books in filing cabinets. Uh, this is mostly comic books and um, some office stuff that I have filed in here. As you can tell, I have a printer up there too. Um, so this is kind of like an office slash um, comic book vault uh, that I have here. So this is section one. And this would be section two of the uh, comic book vault. Uh, this is mostly uh, just graphic novels and um, some uh, geek books that I have here. So now what I'm going to do is kind of take you through the uh, journey of uh, comic books that I get from when I initially buy them to when I store them. Uh, this is the uh, bottom drawer of uh, the first uh, filing cabinet that I have. Uh, this bottom drawer here is uh, reserved for uh, comic books that I haven't read yet. So as soon as I acquire a, uh, a new comic book, it goes right into this drawer no matter what. Like so uh, whatever bag it comes in, I just throw it in there. Even if it, if it comes raw, as you can see, I have some, some raw books here. I just, I just throw them right in there. Um, they're actually pretty, pretty safe uh, in here. And I know some people put a fresh new bag and board uh, with their comics as soon as they get them. I actually don't do that. Uh, no particular reason. Um, I just like to read the comic book first before I bag and board it. That's just my personal preference. It's probably better to put a fresh bag and board on it, but my personal preference is to read the book first before I bag and board it. As you could see, uh, I have a backlog of, uh, of comics that I have not read yet. <laughs> really a lot of comics not read yet, and I really need have some catching up to do. So that's the drawer with comics that have yet to be read. So after I finish reading a comic, what I do is I stick it in this uh, basket here. This is the waiting to be filed uh, basket. And uh, as you can see, I have comic books in here that I've read in the past few months that are waiting to be filed. I also have some magazines back here that I kind of pick up when I'm at the drugstore or something like that, some cool things here. And then I also have some other comics here that I haven't read, like The Dark Knight 3. I've had this sitting in this basket. Um, I don't know why I don't just stick it in my need to be read drawer, but I've had these this Dark Knight 3 run in here probably since they came out. I have not gotten around to reading The Dark Knight 3 yet. And I really hope to soon because I, I've heard it's good. If you've read Dark Knight 3, let me know. But So anyway, from, from this Justice League, <laughs> magazine on that these are the books that are waiting to be filed and i usually wait till you know most of this basket is full um before i actually go and prepare these uh comics for storage because when i do uh prepare them for storage it's usually like uh i take about an hour hour and a half to uh not only prepare them for storage, put them in the appropriate bags and change the boards and everything like that. But I also uh, catalog them in a database and I'll show you what software that I use to uh, catalog uh, my collection. Now these baskets here are where I keep uh, most of my uh, storage materials, materials that I use to store the comics such as uh, bags and boards. And if you're wondering what kind of bags and boards that I use to store my comics, I do use E. Gerber Mylar. I, I really do prefer uh, to use Mylar and uh, mostly the reason why is because after I store my comics, um, I really do not want to have to change the bags. This is just really uh, 
It's really durable material and um, it just really makes the comic book look nice um, once it is in, uh, in Mylar. You probably can't really tell that well with the camera, but when you're actually standing in front of these comics in person, you really could tell a huge difference. So here's here's what the, the Mylar looks like. Uh, as you see, there's this really nice gloss on it. And these bags, um, from what I'm told, never ever have to be changed. And then here is one in just a regular standard poly bag. As you can see, it's like really rippled and I mean, I don't think this bag is even that old. Um, this is one of the comics that are still waiting to be filed. Originally, when I started collecting comic books seriously about 10 years ago, I did uh, store the comic books in just regular poly bags. And I always used Silver Age size poly bags just because uh, the sizes of comic books kind of vary between the ages. It's This is kind of like a one size fit fits all. I don't have to buy certain bags for my modern ones. I don't have to buy certain ones for my Bronze Age ones. I just all stick them in Silver Age ones and they fit perfectly. And when you're a comic book collector, you know that wherever you can save a little bit of money, that would be best because this is this can be an expensive hobby. Not only um, finding uh, the comics to add to your collection, but also the materials to um, efficiently and effectively take care of them. So that being said, with respect to trying to save money in this hobby, why, you're probably asking, did I switch to Mylar bags? Because these are much, much more expensive than your standard poly bags. And the reason for that, like I said, I think I mentioned very briefly, is that these uh, poly bags actually have to be changed every so often uh, because they're no longer going to protect your comics effectively after a period of time. Um, I don't know exactly what that period of time is uh, I've heard some people say five years. I've heard some people say 10 years. I've heard some people who have not even changed them at all and just kind of leave them and they say their comics are fine. Um, for me, it's kind of more the aesthetics. Uh, if I move this here, you'll see uh, when I was when I was storing my comics in just these regular uh, poly bags that you can get pretty much at any comic shop, um, I was noticing that even after a couple months, they were starting to ripple and look really ugly like this. And I notice that books pre let's say 1993 do this more uh you can kind of you can get away with putting more modern books in these poly bags uh because for some reason these modern books i don't know if it's because of the uh the, the paper they use or the uh the type of ink they use but they don't they actually don't have this they don't get this ripple. And here's an example. This is Batman Annual number one from the New 52. Uh, I believe this was published in 2012 or 2011, something on. This book here has been in the same bag since the day that I bought it. And as you can see, the bag here, I'm gonna just kind of go along here. As you can see, this bag here has remained in perfect condition from the day that I bought it. No rippling, nothing. This just looks absolutely amazing. But with books from the early 1990s and books like these from the early 1980s and, and below, you're always gonna kinda get this ripple with the poly bags. And I'm telling you, this ripple will appear mere months after you put that comic in there. I thought maybe it was temperature. I thought maybe it was humidity. I didn't know. I actually experimented in different types of conditions to store these books. And no matter what kind of temperature, humidity, whatever, I always got this ripple here. But again, this isn't happening with these more modern books. And my guess is, I don't know for sure why, but my guess is because it's the type of paper. These older books here are printed on this cheap newsprint and these modern books are actually printed on higher quality paper with uh, probably better quality ink. And I honestly think that that is what is preventing the ripple effect, I guess. Um, from happening on the bags. Now I'm sure the rippling here isn't really an issue of, uh, of damage. Uh, I'm sure the poly bag is keeping this book uh, quite safe still. Uh, for me, it's more the aesthetics. Uh, this ripple for some reason just really bothers me. This is just my personal preference. I absolutely hate when this happens. So that is why with older books, I tend to put them in Mylar. Now I'm not being paid to endorse Mylar, but I do absolutely love it because it is um, the gold standard in comic book protection. Uh, Mylar is made from the same material that is used to store documents at the Library of Congress. So um, all archival experts in the world, whether they're storing comic books or other sensitive 
and uh, delicate documents, they will always will store them in Mylar. But uh, if Mylar is too expensive for you, uh, you know, polypropylene, poly bags, standard poly bags will just do the trick. Like I said, I just prefer the Mylar due to the aesthetics and uh, due to the fact that uh, you never really have to change Mylar bags. Now, of course, if you want, you can most certainly put your entire collection in Mylar, uh, which if you can afford to do that, that's great. Um, the only thing is, is uh, Mylar is quite a bit more expensive than your, uh, your just your standard uh, polypropylene bags. And also Mylar is not really as accessible. Um, the only place where you can really get Mylar um, at a good price is right from the distributor and they are uh, E. Gerber. I've seen Mylar on Amazon. Uh, however, it is quite a bit more expensive than if you were to buy it in bulk directly from E. Gerber. Uh, however, the only thing that's kind of crappy about E. Gerber is that they you cannot order these online from E. Gerber. You actually have to call this company and order these bags the old fashioned way over the phone. But that being said, their service was great. I, I placed my order. I think I ordered about a thousand of these and it cost me maybe, uh, I can't remember now cause it's been a while, but it's maybe two, $300 US. And they came probably within a few days. But just of note though, I do have a uh, access to a US mailbox cause I live very close to the border. Even though I live in Canada, I do live very close to a border and I just have them shipped to the US um, when I need something like this. So when the mood strikes me and I finally want to store these uh, comics that I've read, uh, basically what I do is I give them a, a fresh bag and a fresh board. I have some boards over here. Um, again, all Silver Age size. That's just because I found with Silver Age one size fits all, like I mentioned. And after the comics are in bags and boards, what I'll do is I will catalog them. And I do use a particular app to catalog my comics, which I will show you right now. So the app I use is called CLZ Comics or CLZ if you're in the US and you can get this. I have this on my iPad, but um, I also have it on my phone and on my computer. You can, they have this app available for uh, tablets, uh, phones and uh, computers. So we'll go into this. And uh, I, I really do like this app and I'm not officially endorsing this because they're not paying me to say this, but this is just the app that I use. Uh, someone at a comic book store recommended this app to me and I ended up really liking it. Uh, this app is not free, however, there is a cost. Like the, the app is free to download and they'll let you um, add a few comics to a database, I think maybe 50 comics. But afterwards, if you want to go above 50, uh, there is a fee. I don't remember how much it was, but for some reason, $25 sticks out in my head but uh, that this was many years ago. Uh, but anyway, uh, so basically what I do is I take the, the comic book uh, that I wanna add to the database. You go to uh, add by searching online and the CLZ database has like literally every single comic book every pu ever published. So for example, say I wanted to add uh, Amazing Spider-Man. You just search Amazing Spider-Man and uh, as you can see, they, they already start giving you suggestions. Say I want Amazing Spider-Man volume one and then every single issue from Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1 is in there. And, uh, and then you just, you just add the ones that you're adding to your database. And, uh, and then that's, that's it. And then once, uh, once you're done there, you can go back to your collection, which is all comics here. And on the side here, I have every, every single title that I have in my collection is in here. And uh, this actually is really handy because if you're at a comic book store and you're looking to fill holes and things like that, and you're, you're searching through back issues and you're not sure if you have a particular issue, all you have to do is pull out your phone, pull up your database, and it'll tell you which ones you have. So like, for example, here's a man things up here. And it tells me from the man thing volume one, I have issues one to 12. Uh, same thing with uh, say I'm looking through new mutants back issues it'll tell me which ones I have. So I don't have straight runs of New Mutants. It tells, it tells me I have 1 to 10, 12, 30, 37, 66, so on and so forth. So, so yeah, so if I'm going through and back issue bin and issue 40 of the New Mutants comes up, I'm like, oh, do I have that? Pull it up and it tells me right there. And uh, I know if I want to add that to my collection or not. The other thing that's cool about this app is uh, 
just kind of gives you the cover art and it gives you a little bit of um once the comic book is added to your uh database a little blurb comes out about the comic when you search for it so say i'm looking at uh i don't know uh new mutants volume one number eight I, if i just click on it it'll give me what the with the cover art i go back it gives me a little plot gives you characters that appear there and it also give you uh, the writers and creators this is a really really handy tool i i absolutely love it uh this actually uh, in my opinion, is a pretty competent substitute to uh, this big old doorstop here. Uh, now, again, this is a price guide though. That's the only limitation with uh, the CLZ uh, app. It doesn't give you current values uh, for the comics, but I personally don't really care uh, about values of comic books. I just kind of collect comic books for the love of collecting comic books. I don't really care what they're worth. Now, obviously, I kind of get ticked off when I'm looking for a particular issue that's sought after and I got to pay a lot, but uh, through and through, I really don't care that much about the value. But uh, I, I mostly have this, this book here to tell me about uh, Milestone Comics. Like, I don't really look too much at the values in my Overstreet price guide, but uh, sometimes I do like to know uh, about the significances of a particular comic book issues. That's another limitation to this app. It doesn't tell you the significance of a particular uh, particular comic book. So for example, let's see if I go to Back to Man thing, for example. Uh, if you go here, so I know, I think uh, I think this this issue here is like the second appearance or something of, uh, of Howard the Duck. So it doesn't tell you that. It just, it tells you that Howard the Duck appears in it, but uh, it won't, it won't tell you that it's his, his second appearance. That's that's the only reason why I, I like to have um, a copy of this around, just because it'll tell me the significance of a particular issue. Same thing, like if you go to New Mutants 98 here, it doesn't tell you that this is the first appearance of Deadpool. Just, uh, actually, it doesn't even tell you Deadpool appears in this. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah. Oh, and one last uh, point just about this app that I think is uh, really cool is after you add a particular comic to your database, uh, it gets sent to a cloud, okay? And as you can see here, it sync changes. This is really handy when you have this app on your phone and on your computer, because say I used my uh, iPad to add the book. Um, I want that book to appear in my database when I pull it up on my phone and on my computer. So I think the last time I added books to the collection, I was using my, maybe my phone. Um, so I want all those books that I added uh, to appear on this iPad. So I just hit sync changes and uh, it just automatically adds or removes. Um, as you can see, I, I sold a big lot of Ghost Rider comics. So um, it's removing a bunch of Ghost Rider from my, uh, from my database. So now for the actual storage component. So I've read the comic books and I've prepared them for packaging. How do I store them? So uh, when it comes to comic book storage, you really have, I wanna say three options here. So you can either use your standard, uh, standard boxes here, which I would not recommend, and I'll tell you why in a second. You can use uh, filing cabinets, or you can use drawer boxes. So as you can see, my uh, primary and preferred method of storage is uh, filing cabinets. And as you can see here, I have, uh, sorry, it's locked right now. Um, I have most of my collection in filing cabinets. So you see all my comic books there. And then I also have uh, another, another row here another another big filing cabinet here now the top drawer of this filing cabinet i actually don't use for comics i actually keep like other stuff in here i'm actually i have a lot of paperwork to file from my job and things like that so uh, i'm kind of leaving it for that but uh but yeah my primary method is uh of comic book storage is to use uh, filing cabinets so as you can see here, I also have a huge stack of um, boxes. I have not com converted completely to uh, using filing cabinets, and uh, but there's a, there's a reason for that. Um, mostly uh, because I don't want to go out and get a 
new filing cabinet right now. <laughs> uh, and um, I do I do have comics in here. These are mostly comic books. Like I have, uh, these are all modern. I don't think I have anything really uh, pre like 2012 or anything in here. Um, Amazing Spider-Man number one. This was like, I think the third or something like that. Amazing Spider-Man number one within like a two year period. I was actually getting annoyed with that. But yeah, these are all like modern books. And uh, I, I don't really know if I plan on keeping these. Like, uh, that's why I kind of keep them in these uh, boxes because I, uh, I, I don't know if I will keep them. I guess the intention is to sell all of these comics but uh, if you've ever tried to sell comic books before, you know that uh, when it comes to newer stuff, it's practically impossible to get rid of for a fair price. If you're okay letting them go for like 20 bucks for this whole box or something like that, then not even, probably 10, then yeah, get rid of them. But I obviously am not okay with that. Older the better, generally, is the rule of thumb. Uh, nobody wants uh, these these gems from like 2012 <laughs> and 2014 and whatever uh, maybe maybe in the next 20 years maybe someone might but I don't know I'll just hang on to them now for now because I cannot be bothered to spend any more time trying to sell these if an opportunity arises it arises if not I really don't care I do not prefer boxes I actually hate boxes uh, because uh, they are a pain in the neck uh, for example say I want a comic that is in that bottom box right there I have to now move every single one of these boxes to get to that one comic that's under there. It's a pain in the neck and I absolutely hate it. Um, as my collection uh, grew, it uh, it was becoming more cumbersome uh, to access particular boxes. So I just said, screw it, I'm switching to filing cabinets. Now, if you want, you can also do drawer boxes. Um, I personally don't like drawer boxes, uh, but uh, they, they do eliminate uh, having to uh, take every single box away to get to that one comic that's at the bottom. Uh, I Like I said, I, I prefer filing cabinets uh, and a lot of people probably won't like filing cabinets because they look too, I don't know, office-like or industrial or something like that. But um, uh, you, if you want, you can even splurge and go to Staples and get these really nice uh, wooden uh, filing cabinets, which is what I originally wanted to do. I wanted to buy like three uh, oak filing cabinets and store all my comics in there, but uh, it is uh, beaucoup d'argent. Like really, it's, it's it's super expensive to get that kind of stuff. But if you have some money lying around, you want to uh, make your collection and you want to store in style, then uh, I mean, go for it. But uh, anyway, filing cabinets I think are a great alternative. Uh, a lot of times uh, you don't have to buy filing cabinets brand new. If you don't have any filing cabinets and um, you do want to maybe consider uh, putting your collection in uh, filing cabinets, I have to say it is quite handy because if I want a particular comic book, all I have to do is open, open a drawer. Okay, bottom one, bottom one, no problem. Just open the drawer. <laughs> like, I absolutely love this uh, aspect of it. And I don't even have that big of a collection. I have probably, I don't know, like, under 2,000 comics now, because I, I actually sold a few older ones. Like I sold a bunch of Ghost Rider comics and uh, I sold a bunch of um, uh, Black Panther comics too, uh, older ones, obviously. So if you have a huge collection, I really would recommend uh, maybe considering filing cabinets because they are just uh, really, really handy. Uh, and like I said, you don't have to buy filing cabinets brand new uh, most of the time. like. You a lot of times you can go on like Craigslist and uh, or eBay or something like that, and they're always like these like offices that are looking to uh, get rid of uh, old filing cabinets, and they'll they'll sell them at like a really heavily discounted price. Now, mind you, if you are going to do that, um, you're not going to get a really nice looking filing cabinet. You're probably going to get one of those like older like cream colored ones from like the uh, the seventies. <laughs> but uh, they will get the job done. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to highly recommend that you do, if you're actually gonna go and, uh, and see these filing cabinets, I actually would recommend uh, bringing two comics with you, okay? So if you look at this filing cabinet, this is a, uh, this is a wider kind of filing cabinet. Filing cabinets come in uh, multiple different sizes. So what I would do is actually bring uh, two comic books 
with you uh, when you go look at these filing cabinets. And uh, just open up the drawer and put them side by side. Uh, just put them side by side. If they fit like this, where you can put fit um, two rows in, then you're golden and you will be able to fit uh, lots and lots of comics uh, in here. I think, uh, I haven't counted, but I think you could probably fit 200 comics in here. Uh, I think that would be a good guess. I don't know. You guys estimate how many there are in there, but uh, I think you could probably fit uh, 200 comics in here and with them not being crammed. Uh, these are not crammed in here. I guess you can see I can like easily navigate through uh, through this uh, through this filing cabinet here. It's not uh, it's not that difficult. What would really be cool is if you can get one filing cabinet that is this size, these like really, really wide ones. Uh, I absolutely love these ones. These are the handiest. Uh, these are usually a little harder to find, uh, but uh, you can fit four rows of comics in here and it is, uh, it's, it's great. Um, I absolutely love this, uh, this big filing cabinet. Again, these are a little harder. These, uh, these types are, more common and uh, and those ones those like cream colored ones that are have like that are like four drawers high um, but uh, really any filing cabinet will do I highly highly recommend uh, filing cabinets and of course when you store them in filing cabinets I think it goes without saying that you uh, store them standing face up as you would in a comic book box do not store your comics like this in the filing cabinet uh, you won't get as many comics in there and uh, this is actually damaging to the comic book so please do not do that uh, just store them as you would in a box that's uh, it's pretty pretty simple and the other thing i like about filing cabinets is uh, they do offer uh, pretty good protection for your comic books uh, these i believe are both fire and flood proof uh, filing cabinets so uh, I actually have opted to store my comics in the basement because of that now those ones in the boxes yeah they're probably a little bit more exposed but it's really not that big of a deal to store your comics in a basement especially if your basement is finished you see many things online telling you that oh uh, storing your comics in a basement is absolutely terrible it's damaging to your comics I, I, ne I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah, there's a lot of moisture in your basement, but if your basement is finished and you have one of these, and this is a dehumidifier, and you have a Humidex, um, I don't think it's really a big deal if you store your comics in the basement. I think they're quite safe. Uh, and I, I looked up online, as long as you keep your moisture uh, in any room, not even just your basement, under 50%, which as you can see, my um, Humidex is under 50% right now, you're fine and your comics will not get damaged. I've had these comics in my uh, basement for a very, very long time and uh, they, no damage whatsoever. These, these things are just, they're in fine condition, um, especially because they're in Mylar and they're, they're in these like flood and, um, fireproof uh, filing cabinets. So, but yeah, that's uh, that's really about it. That's uh, how I uh, collect and store comic books. Um, let me know what your methods are. I mean, to each his own. Everybody has their own way that they like to store comic books. Uh, if you have anything uh, unique or a unique way to store your comic books, uh, let me know. But uh, if, uh, if you're looking for a way to to store comic books, uh, I think, and, and you have a quite a big collection, and by big collection I mean probably 15 to 1500 and above, uh, I would definitely opt to get a uh, filing cabinets because it's very, very convenient and it actually helps to save space. Uh, there's nothing more eyesore than a big stack of white boxes sitting in your living room. Uh, I mean, filing cabinets are not that much nicer, but at least you can put your filing cabinets in a basement or in a, in a room where no one has to see them, right? So, um, but I guess you can do that with boxes too. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling now. <laughs> so in the comments, let me know what your method for uh, storing comic books is. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode. Take care. I think I'm gonna read this one next.